is um I watched I told you I watched that video China's Reckoning and it had the first three parts which we talked about in a previous podcast. But the fourth part came out and it basically was this. It was like, look, this is in the world when people are hypersensitive. You see that that recognizes a deep recognition of their frailty and insecurity, and we know this. Yet when we see it in China, we don't have that same reaction. And this person's claim was China's sensitivity around these small things, and if you list Taiwan in your list of countries, and that's some egregious sin, and you're not allowed to have uh, any depiction of the Dalai Lama in a Marvel movie, so you got to make the enlightened one a white woman – from Ireland, <laughs> you know, like their insane sensitivity around that is indicative of what they know to be a, a deep weakness uh, in in their position. Now, they are more powerful than they were 10 years ago, certainly, but this person argues that with, you know, the demographic thing that we talked about and their unwillingness to really go hard back on the one-child policy um, – and with the number of these particular projects that they talked about in this short documentary, it's like a total of an hour and 20 minutes with all four parts. There's this big water project that they're running and it's cost billions and billions of dollars. And this person says, look, you could just raise the price of water and that would affect supply and demand immediately. Instead, they're diverting all this stuff. But the habit of China, according to this creator, is that they cannot admit that they've done something wrong. Mm. So when they when they have committed to a crappy path, which is an advantage of the way that they do things, they have the long-term vision one of the built-in disadvantages of that is that their egos are often on the line. Mm. And so whereas America is flighty and Obamacare, and now it's Biden care, but we're going to cancel that when Trump comes in, there's there's not an invested, oh, this is on me if this yeah, yeah. fails. But then we go back and forth all the time. They have this problem of not being able to uh, admit that they've made poor decisions. Well, that, you, mentioning ego is interesting to me because I, when I think of macro politics i think of the strength of a country mattering more than oh yeah their leadership is a little bit big egoed who cares but then you were telling me about world war ii and color do you want to talk about this a little bit sure. <laughs> i didn't realize how the ego of a leader can submarine an entire country's future yeah so i, re I really enjoyed it um i i often talk down about documentaries and you know, as, as I do the news, but I still participate in both. So uh, this is on Netflix. I do like it. Documentaries that are older, I tend to be more interested in. I recognize anything made in America is going to have a pro-America slant, so I try to keep that in mind. But just the basics of World War II, which I think almost anyone in the world would agree with, are fascinating in it. Like, I don't even need to get into the controversial stuff to, to be fascinated. But Stalingrad was what I think you're referring to in one thing. Uh, I could, oh my gosh, so much cool stuff from this documentary. But... Hitler is trying to get, I believe, a warm water port as he invades Russia, which he did, shouldn't have done. <laughs> but <laughs> he could have won. But on the way to this warm water port, out of the way, there's a river. And on the river is the town of Stalingrad, which obviously Stalin named for himself. And Hitler says, we have to take that. That's where I want you to, to intercept uh, uh, the flow of goods up and down the river. He could have gone down the river quite easily, Set up a blockade, no problem, no city, no fortifications, taking it. But he wants to go to Stalingrad. No, Stalin he says, because he hates Stalin. Stalin says, not one step back, we're defending Stalingrad because it's got his name in it. And for strategic purposes, it actually made more sense because after you get pushed back from that last stronghold on the river, it's just open plains until the Ural Mountains. And what was fascinating is, is if there's a ton of uh, specifics of this, but this was a huge turning point in the war where the Germans were turned back and would not, they could not break through the last line of defense, eventually got surrounded. Uh, ego of the, I think, what was his name? The guy who was in charge of the Luftwaffe. I forget his name right now. But he, throughout the war, according to this documentary, just kept talking up the Luftwaffe. First at Dunkirk. They had a, uh, if you've seen the movie Dunkirk, Germans barged through France, which, by the way, they did while on methamphetamine, which is incredible. That's why the Blitzkrieg worked, because they were on meth, and they stayed up for three days in a row. <laughs> so they, they got there really fast. They were able to rip through France, because they just never slept. And they, like, they, you know, no problem with violence, like, no empathy. They just ripped through it on three days of meth, <laughs> which the French couldn't understand, uh, and eventually push the British troops back to Dunkirk. They have a land army here, and they can crush them, but the leader of the Luftwaffe says, no, 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 we're going to take care of it. 
And the RAF from England flies over and is able to give enough cover, keep the Luftwaffe off, and I think 400,000 British soldiers are able to escape because of this guy's ego. He's that was that was the story I was thinking. Crazy. They could have just crushed it. They're like, no, we want to crush it in this particular we way need to show because the, of our yeah. egos. Yes. And Britain went, all right, well, we're just going to get these guys out. We're going to get cool rid of you. them. Oh, yeah. that's cool with you? All right. <laughs> so Thanks for the giant egos. Later on, this guy says, don't worry. Uh, the, the invading force of Stalingrad gets here. They get... Uh, eventually surrounded come fall slash winter. Uh, mostly fall is what this documentary says. It says that the winter contributing has been over-exaggerated, that they lost. So they get surrounded by, um, I think, Romanians and other... No, not Romanians. Romanians were on the other side. doesn't matter. They get surrounded. And the Luftwaffe guy says, don't worry, we can airdrop enough supplies in. My Luftwaffe are awesome. They can't get a tenth of the supplies needed to airdrop to these guys. These guys are going, can we please surrender? Can we please punch through? Can No, 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 stay and fight. We have to take Stalingrad, and the Luftwaffe is really, really good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just, they get decimated, completely destroyed. They Many of them freeze and starve to death. Uh, and as you go through this documentary, there's just so many instances of one man's ego turning the course of the war well i don't know if it turned the course of the war but wasn't there a moment in time where hitler had two rules one is don't wake me up which is fine that's fair you're the leader there's always something going wrong but two was our absolute best division can only hear instructions directly from me yeah so not by the way if i'm sleeping my second in command is good enough yeah so there was on d-day uh it happened at whatever six ish a.m in in france i think it was like may have been Hitler wasn't up to 9 a.m., essentially, in whatever time zone he was in, which was one or two over. And people were too afraid to wake him to tell him that D-Day had occurred. In addition, like you said, he had exclusive control of one of the panzer divisions that was stationed nearby and was an elite panzer division. Uh, Not that it would have necessarily turned the course of the war, but, like, they couldn't wake up the leader and they couldn't get control of these tanks. It's just a fascinating story. And the other guy who was their second in command. What's the – God, I'm forgetting all their names. Uh, Rommel. Rommel apparently was unreachable as well because he went home for his wife's birthday. <laughs> it's just like all these crazy, crazy things. And I could, I could go on and on. The Battle of Midway has the most ridiculous turns in it, as does Pearl Harbor, where which is why there were aircraft carriers that survived because they blew up all of these battleships except the aircraft carriers happened to be out that day. And then they won at the Battle of Midway through ridiculous strokes of chance and uh, you know, skill as well, but it's it's a crazy good eight-ish hours yeah. of... I, no, I definitely, I plan on watching the whole thing, but it's just what you said about China reminded me because I can imagine myself listening to this saying, well, China's ego, that's not going to matter. What mm-hmm. matters is your economic output and your, it's like, no, actually you, a leader's ego can absolutely change the course of history. Yeah, especially when, when he's got dictator-like control, you know? Yeah, so I just thought that was interesting. That's a lesson I took from the stories about World War II that you were telling me about, mm-hmm. just how how much that can change the course of something. So when you say China's ego might be their downfall, it's much easier for me to believe, yeah. having reflected on the stories about Germany in World War II. Yeah. Well, I, and, and, you know, this is all beyond me. I'm mostly just saying what I've watched and what it made me think. So I don't, I don't know if any of this is true, but it is interesting that yeah, that that what would we perceive at least in America as an extreme sensitivity to criticism? Like if you if you depict uh, Xi Jinping as Winnie the Pooh, that is you're dead. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> the end of you. Uh, if if they ever get a hand, like I will never. To be clear, I'm never going to China after this podcast, which doesn't get a tremendous amount of views. I will never in my life go to China because I understand that that could put my life in jeopardy. Yeah, I might for, never come back for these things that I have said. That they're sensitive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, would would get me <laughs> you guys are sensitive we're not sensitive right. and because you said that you will die we are strong yeah and it's, it's like wow if, if this were happening uh, at a singular individual level we would go that person is compensating is what we would say so that's that's sort of the argument that this guy makes in his video uh, but yeah what else we got a lot of stuff. this is a random one we haven't talked about i just saw who knows if it's true but five vaccinated ohioans will be chosen at random to win a million dollars <laughs> yeah any Ohioan who has received at least one shot of the COVID vaccine is eligible. Also, uh, oh no, I, I can't remember if they were going to say this or not. But anyway, so we'll just stop there. I think that's a that's an awesome way to do it because people love lotteries. So if you just took that and divided it by the population of Ohio and you said everyone who gets vaccinated is going to get this insignificant yeah, yeah. sum of money, no one would care. But you just tell people, hey, the chance that you win this is so small that your brain can't possibly comprehend how you, you will not win this. Mm-hmm. 
but there's a chance <laughs> you get a million dollars. It'll be interesting to see if uh, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Or if per dollar more people participate than or less people than the actual lottery, you know what I mean? Yes, you're saying uh, if the if the fact you have to get a vaccine instead of paying to. Well, I guess some people it's not really a fair comparison because some people just had the vaccine didn't need this this bribe. I wonder how many people this bribe moves is what I'm saying, and I don't really have a hypothesis. I don't. I'm not sure. I just thought. Listen, I'm I'm actually pretty neutral on if people should get vaccinated or not. Um, I know it's like super controversial because there's this idea that if everyone doesn't get it, then COVID can variant, but. Uh, I don't know. We live in a country where we let people make their own decisions for a lot of things. So I feel like letting people make their own decisions for this makes sense. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to get people to vaccinate, I think it's an awesome policy. Yeah. So I yeah. liked it a lot. I hope it works. I uh, I don't know how people value that, but I, it's, I'll be curious to see the data. I think it's a very good idea. I think the one thing that would make it go better is if you pulled the name, then you looked up if they had been vaccinated or not, but either way you called them. <laughs> and then you recorded the call <laughs> and then you publish it because all you need is one guy saying oh yeah it's charlie hooper here uh yep that's me oh congratulations your name was pulled you would win a million dollars because you got vaccinated Assuming you got you vaccinated right uh oh wait let me check the system oh you didn't oh okay sorry uh well we'll talk to you later and just hang up and have it recorded and then publish it on youtube or something people would just stampede out because you don't want to be that guy yeah, yeah you know what i mean that that's gut-wrenching for that guy. I think all of a sudden you'd see Ohio vaccines just shoot everyone, hundred percent. If if that story, if they did out, that, yeah, like, yeah, the FOMO that would go nationwide too. You know how how well, widely covered that, that would to, be. That speaks to the difference between uh, the promise of an advantage and the fear of missing out. It, like the fear of missing out would move people so much more intensely. Oh yeah, I used to do this. I dude, I know the math. Lotteries are stupid. In New York and in investment banking, anytime it hit a certain amount of money the office would pool money together to buy tickets for the office. And then if we won, which we never did, we would split it. And I always threw money in. And my thought was, I would much rather just burn this over the course of a year, hundred bucks. Let's then say. have every one of my then friends. Be the one person in the office. Are you kidding? <laughs> Nine of my friends quit because they're all rich. Oh, and no, I got to show up the next day. That's in my an insurance and policy against absolutely hating. That's yourself. what it was. Yeah. So I'm going to just, I'm going to pay a hundred bucks a year. Yeah. To not show up one day. Yeah. And hate myself. I wouldn't have organized this. Like I wouldn't have. No, I don't want this. us to buy yeah. this, but if we're going to go around, Hey, you yeah. want to chip in? Yeah. I'm going to chip in for my sanity's sake. <laughs> yeah. That would, that would be awful. Devastating. Yeah. So that was it. It was just insurance and we never won. It was worth it. <laughs> Hope that you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to see more like this and have us do more podcasts, we are 100% funded by our generous patrons. And if you'd like to contribute, there's a link in the description and we'll have one pop up on the screen right here so that we can do more podcasts where we have fun conversations and hopefully some deep ones like this. Either way, hope that you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.